who have been displaced and that's what we want to move on to. Well, Tonish, if I could bring you to matters closer to home and, and close uh, to your own heart and head, and that's the issue of the cohesion of the, the coalition and indeed the, co the cohesion, if you like, of, of the Labour Party. Um, the word is from Roisin Shorthall's supporters that they were completely, and she was completely dismayed, at the lack of political backing and political cover that you gave her in her row with James Riley. I have uh, always supported uh, Roisin Shortall. Uh, I think Roisin Shortall is an outstanding public representative, somebody that I have great time for. Uh, I think that she has worked extremely hard uh, in the Department of Health. Uh, there's no doubt that there were, that there were difficulties. Uh, we had been working on those difficulties over a period of time. There were meetings of the uh, Health Subcommittee of the Cabinet. There was a meeting between the Economic Management Council of the Government and uh, the Ministers in the uh, Department of Health uh, before the summer. There was a meeting between the Taoiseach, myself, Minister Riley, and Minister Shortall uh, before the summer. Uh, there were discussions between uh, the staff who worked for me and uh, the Department of Health. There was only a meeting last week only between me and the Health Service Executive, which was attended by Minister Shortall and Minister Lynch. But on the, crucial, on the crucial, Minister sorry, sorry, Minister, but on the crucial issue of James Riley changing the criteria for the selection of sites for the, the primary care services, the initial list of 20 was drawn up by Roisin Shortall, and then the criteria changed at the hand of uh, James Riley, and 15 new names went on that list and two of those just happened to be in his own constituency. At what point were you aware of the particular names on that list of 15? Well I think what we have to understand here is what was, what was happening. What we were doing here was providing the money to build uh, primary care centres. Uh, there were 20 which were selected, uh, those 20 remained, there was no change in, uh, in those. There was a decision taken uh, to add an additional 15 uh, so that uh, no vested interest in the health system would be able to have the government over a barrel uh, in relation to the ones that were being Why provided. was the now criteria supported, changed uh, midstream? Why was the criteria changed the criteria halfway through the process? Because there, there were additional numbers being added. But this why not use the old the system? Context. No, but what we have to remember here is what was happening. This was done in, uh, when the stimulus package that was uh, presented by Brendan Howland in uh, July was being done. And as part of that stimulus package, we wanted to include the provision of the primary care centres because this was a key part of the programme for government. The idea of moving our health system, an essential part of the health service reform, to move to an emphasis on primary care. But we have the difficulty at the moment of somebody... Somebody, sorry, no, Tony, no, listen, sorry to interrupt you, but we, we, we're familiar with all of the background. We know why 15 were being added because inevitably there's some fallout and dispute and you want to make sure that there's 25 in the final list. The question is, how come Roisin Shorthall drew up a list of 20 under one criteria and then suddenly the criteria changed at the hands of James Riley, despite the objections of Roisin Shorthall, and a new 15 were added under that new criteria and lo and behold, two of those 15 happened to be in his own constituency. Does that because not look like stroke politics increased. to you? And the numbers, no, the numbers, the numbers were being increased, and the numbers were being increased because we wanted to make sure that uh, primary care centres were being provided. This is a major change in the way in which we plan to deliver the health service in this country. We have a situation at the moment that if you're sick, you go to your GP, you go somewhere else for a blood test, you go somewhere else for some other service. And what we wanted to do was to make sure that these services were being provided in a coordinated, more cost-effective way in primary care centres. The critical issue here and the critical question is that the money was being provided for the development of these primary care centres. It is never, it was never the intention that the number of primary care centres would be confined to 20 or indeed to 35. That wasn't the, the question, here Minister, that wasn't the question, that, that wasn't the question I asked you. I asked you why the criteria changed midstream. A whole set of new rules was suddenly introduced by James Riley, despite the objections of the Minister responsible for this project. And 15 specific uh, locations were suddenly included, despite the objections of Roisin Shortall. You backed the Minister on that, you didn't back your own junior Minister. Why? No I, I, no, I supported Roisin Shortall all through this process uh, and, uh, you know, from the very beginning uh, have been very clear that our objective 
is to implement what is in the programme for government, to implement the shift to primary care. That it means the provision of the primary care centres, the staffing of the primary care centres, the introduction of the legislation which will be required to uh, introduce uh, the GP uh, service. All of that is part of a package of measures which is aimed at reforming our health system. And that is, that is my priority, to make sure that we get a health service and a primary mm -hmm. care system that works for the patient and that works for the public. Now, there will always be difficulties and there will always be differences and, dif and disagreements so you, you don't between think, ministers you don't and think between people and departments. Unlike, say, Leo Varadkar, you don't think that this looks like a political stroke and that that's the perception held by many people in this country tonight? Well, we can call it what we like, but I think well, what, what is would more you call important it? Uh, is... is the, no, what I think is more important, and we have to look at what we're, what we're attempting to achieve here. What we're attempting to achieve here is a decent health service. We have to try and do that in circumstances where there is less money and fewer staff. Right. The important point here is that this government provided the money to build primary care centres, has provided the money to recruit the staff, to staff those primary care centres. All right. I want to see that happen. And I hope now that uh, uh, Alex White uh, will press ahead with that uh, when he's appointed as the new Minister of State in the Department of Health. All right, can we just move on to the whole issue of the ESM and white 